we did a presentation, I thought of the title before I thought of the, what it actually could be about. I just like the fact that it kind of rhymes and it was quite, uh, quite good. Uh, we'll start off with, I was going to say we'll get this out of the way, but that's not very, yes, probably not the right way to introduce it. This lady, I, I also use this lady at NI Week, and I, I chose her again because I'm lazy. And she did a lot of good stuff, you can all read, so yeah, all that stuff. But the reason I chose her was because of her, uh, the comments that she made. And she is a, a great example of don't judge a book by its cover. And also that uh, just because you're very intelligent doesn't mean to say that you can't also be like funny and a little bit uh, yeah, blunt and to the point. And this one is kind of, this one makes me laugh. Because it, you read it and you think, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit about me, I come with one of these. <laughs> That's, I have a t-shirt with that on, my wife makes her wear it when we go anywhere new. It's uh, standard. So, what's with the title? Uh, yeah, first with CLA Summits, the whole, if every only tool you have is a hammer, blah, 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 used quite often, and it kind of annoyed me because it's, yeah, well, yeah, you'll, you'll find out why it annoys me. <laughs> and it was in direct reference to a discussion about CLAs not knowing everything about everything, which is why I asked about the thing with what do you assume a CLA would, uh, would know. And so a little bit of context. I am prone to a little bit of DIY, a little bit of well, using hammers and nails and things. So this is coming from a thing of that you're not understanding what a hammer is, kind of. Uh, uh, I use the right tool for the job. Sometimes it's a nail, sometimes it's a screw. We'll get to that bit. <laughs> so, yeah. Why did it annoy me to stand up here? Let's, well, start with the hammer. Not that one. That's obvious joke. I had to get it in there. Which hammer? Standard claw hammer. Mallet. A uh, brick lays mallet or Thor's mallet for the nerds. <laughs> or one of these. I deliberately did this slowly, just so you can see how many different hammers there are. If anybody's interested, there are 40 on there. Just, yeah, just so you can see, just. What's an engineering hammer? I don't profess to know what all these hammers do. <laughs> I'm just making the point that there are a lot of hammers. And there, yeah, a few of what, uh, what they actually are. So you're getting the point, there are a lot of hammers. And then there's possibly uh, the most famous hammer of them all, which for those of you who aren't from the UK, that's um, <laughs> Mallet's Mallet from Timmy Mallet. If you're under the age of 30, you've got no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that was like staple Saturday morning viewing. It was from a program called Whack a Day. Word association, so if you, you had to, somebody said a word and you had to do words associated with that word, if you hesitated, you got hit on the head with that hammer. So what about the nail? That nail, same hammer, you can use it for doing something different, or you can do it to remove a nail. Or maybe it's that nail. <laughs> but what about all the other hammers? That's a lump hammer. I was gonna do a lot of these, but I, again, I got bored. Is that, is that scripting when you're doing it? <laughs> is that coming? I don't know. So someone, I think it's Fab has retweeted this several times from the saying like that writing a program is, yeah, is art as well as science. Here's a guy doing some artworks, doing some sculpturing. Oh look, a hammer. I was gonna make a joke with this. This is obviously. Yeah, no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't that kind of joke. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> this, is uh, this is obviously like fame, quite a famous thing, obviously very old. And I was going to make some comment about, if you don't believe me, ask Steve, because he saw it being done. <laughs> but 
Steve's not here, so it's not as funny. And then I found this, which are like engravings of the, the tools that were used to make the statue, and both pictures have a hammer on. Are you getting the point yet that you can use hammers for uh, lots of things? For the first time ever in one of my presentations, genuinely, LabVIEW code. First time I've ever put LabVIEW code in one of my presentations. Three different projects. This one is just a standard toolkit, just as a standard one VI does one thing, opens a connection, reads it, closes it. It's just a standard thing here. So with this one, Steve is very happy because it's just your standard you know, logical thing, no classes, no blah, blah, blah. This is, anybody? DQMH. So with this one, Fab's happy. <laughs> and with this one is Active Framework. So Alan's happy. <laughs> so yeah, could I have used different architectures for all of those three? Yeah, I could have done the one on the end in, yeah, object-oriented. I could have done them all Active Framework, could have done all object-oriented, could have done them all whatever. However, the first one is a toolkit, so it needs to be able to use by anybody. Just drag and drop. It doesn't need to know anything about anything else. The middle one, the DQMH one, it just fitted perfectly with DQMH. So you read the description and it just was like, yeah, this is DQMH. And the third one, I'm not an active framework expert, and I'm using it as a learning exercise for me. It's just something I'm doing for myself. It was a template from, uh, what's the Argentinian guy's name who lives in Florida? Um, Frasidelius? Yeah, Jorge. him, yeah. It, from, another, from a CLA guy, he gave a presentation about uh, like intuitive uh, user interface things. That at, was amazing. At a CLA. So I, I, he sent that to me, and I'm kind of messing around with it just to learn how it, uh, how it all works. And uh, the point is, when you're doing consulting work, you aren't writing the program for yourself. You're writing it for your customers or with your customers. This is the same as what Fab said about you're writing it for the, like the you know, lowest level program or whatever. You're writing it for somebody else to understand. So doing all that is, yeah, if you're using all the bells and whistles and all the stuff is, yeah, is completely pointless. And if I did all three in one, it doesn't mean I don't know anything else. It just means I chose to do them all in one. And yeah, the whole point of being the architect is choosing the right tool for the job. And a good example is uh, John O's comment earlier when he said, I've got no idea, I had no idea about PPLs until Matthias's presentation. It, that doesn't matter at all. The point is, once he heard Matthias talking about PPLs, he was able to say, that fits in with my project. I'm now going to use them. It doesn't matter that he didn't know it already. He saw what it was, and he could apply that direct to his problem or whatever his program. And so, yeah, so he then chose the right, uh, the right tool. This is a bit of a tangent, but this is also something that annoyed me. In Rome, Rome was my first uh, CLA summit. I'd only been to CLA for a few months. Back then, I was very quiet and kind of withdrawn and didn't have the like nerve to say anything. How things changed. It only lasted a couple yeah. of hours actually. It did. Is there any way to go back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you swipe backwards, don't you? Uh, somebody said this when we, uh, we, Nancy was saying about, uh, yeah, talking about the, uh, the CLA exam itself. And she said uh, that, uh, yeah, asking, and somebody shouted out, it has to include OOP, otherwise you shouldn't be an architect. And my reply to that is, <laughs> well, no, that's if, that's, if that's genuinely your thought, then you shouldn't be an architect, because it, it defeats the point of architect, because the architect is there to say what is the best thing. If the best thing is OOP, great. If it's not, there's absolutely no point in doing it, you know, just because it's the new thing, or no point in doing... I'm, I'm assuming Alan does almost everything in Active Framework, because that's what he does, that's his natural thing. What I get hired to do. Yeah. You could also do probably most of your stuff in Fab's DQMH or with uh, Steve's state machine thing. So it's just what... There's no... That statement is... Yeah, I can still... This was, what, 
it was four years ago, five years ago, Rome. It still annoys me to this day when I think of somebody shouting that, uh, shouting that out. Hey, and, and Aaron, <laughs> I don't use DPMH for everything. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's sometimes it's like square peg round hole. And also forcing people to do it. If you say you have to know OOP to do the CLA exam, you're reinforcing the hammer nail nonsense statement as well, because everybody will go through an OOP because they've had to learn it to do their, uh, to spend, to do their four hour exam. A different analogy? You'll see, you'll see how much this annoys me. I need to go backwards. I need to go back. I need to go back on my iPad. Yeah, so you may wonder where I'm going with this. Passenger driving test 18, still at school, university, didn't need a car. Bought my first car, moved to Holland, a few kilometers, blah, blah, blah. Steering wheel was on the wrong side of my English car, so I bought another one, quite a fast one. If you've never had one of those, do yourself a favor and buy one. They are uh, very good cars. Started doing a lot more kilometers and blah, blah, blah. Still just uh, me and my wife. My wife had a company car, so I just needed a small car. The, there is a point to the blue square, and if anybody's watched, uh, Love, is it Love, Death and Robots on Netflix? Yeah. I just watched the one about with the artist with the blue square. Like the, literally, I did that in the morning, then in the evening I watched, and there's one about an artist who puts a blue square on everything, and thought, that's what I just did. <laughs> but if you watch the end of the thing, you don't want to be that artist. There is a point, I will explain why that's, uh, why that's there. And then, yeah, disaster struck. We had one of these. <laughs> but it didn't matter because my wife had the car, it was a state land, so big enough for all three of us. Then, yeah, started working for myself, business was going quite well. Yeah, wife changed jobs, no longer a company car. Fiesta wasn't big enough. To me, there was only one solution, buy a Range Rover. <laughs> that was it, that was the solution. I'm English, Range Rover's English, made just down the road. Um, I live in the Netherlands, wanted to make a point that Britain still makes very good cars, so buy a Range Rover. Don't need a Range Rover? Absolutely not. Nobody who lives anywhere near a residential street <laughs> needs a Range Rover. It's completely unnecessary. However, sometimes it snows, so it's quite handy. My son likes it, it's got a glass roof. He likes it, he thinks it's quite cool. Just been to Denmark, that cabin was literally arse end of nowhere, and it got us there okay, no problems, no hassle. And it doubles as a, uh, a picnic uh, type thing. And if it all goes wrong, you can just go back to simpler ways and just go on a bike. But then, disaster struck again. <laughs> so yeah, I always wanted three kids, but now I've got two, I only want one. <laughs> Is it a problem? No? Why? Just drive a Range Rover. It's actually, I'd not had the Range Rover that long, and we were in, I've taken my son to the zoo, and there'd been an accident on a roundabout, so I couldn't get round the roundabout. It was only a small one. And I was, just came up to it, I was just, I'd been stood there for a few minutes, and then I just suddenly, I just muttered to myself, fuck it, I'm in a Range Rover, and just went straight over the top of the roundabout, <laughs> and straight over the, the other side. Following week, we were in a car park, and I, there was a massive car park, and it had, in between the parking spaces, like the rows, was things of grass. And I thought, I'm not driving all the way, it was one of them ecky long car park things, so you have to go round and round and round to get to, you couldn't just go down one side. And uh, I went over the grass bit, there was my wife in the passenger seat, and my son was in the back, went over the grass thing. Little voice in the back just sort of says, fuck it, we're in a Range Rover. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Oops."> <laughs> <laughs> I, w I didn't need to look at my wife to know what, how she was looking at me. I was con I've never concentrated on the road so much in my life. It's like, who, who said that? <laughs> so, in... This has suddenly stopped changing. I can see it on here, but I don't see it on there. Yeah, when I change it on here, it doesn't change on there.
that one. Go back through. Back to the presentation. Right, I'll see if we we'll 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 make it this time. Right, so in case you didn't get it, this is like the, like the summary of the, of, the, of the life cycle thing. In case you're still not getting it, that's the requirements and that's the architecture. When I was straight out of university, I didn't need a Range Rover. Nobody needs a Range Rover, we've established that. <laughs> and like when, I, when, when it's this, when you've got four, when you've got two adults and two rugrats, you need more than a, yeah, you need more than a three door, like, single person car. So the point I'm trying to make is, well, if you haven't got the point I'm trying to make, then obviously I'm not doing a good enough job. <laughs> um, this is also an exercise in how far I can push a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> that it, it, it doesn't matter, like, if anybody says to you, no, you should. I was having a conversation with uh, Richard uh, Thomas Thoric. And I was saying to him, I don't mind somebody saying to me, uh, yeah, you should have used this architect, you should have used that architect, that's perfectly fine, as long as they are perfectly okay with me turning around to them and telling them to fuck off and mind their own business. <laughs> because I write the programs in the architecture I think is right for my customers, for my requirements. If I'm writing a program for me that's gonna be compiled into an application, I'll do it in whatever is good enough for me, because probably no one else is ever going to see it. If I'm doing it for somebody who uses LabVIEW for like, yeah, two hours a week, they're not going to want something in some kind of, with all the abstraction and all the whatever, they're going to want something that is, yeah, very, very simple. So it's not all about hammers and nails and every problem's a nail, blah, 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 because as we saw, there are a lot of types of hammers. So, yeah, if you want to say that, then yeah, you, you, you shouldn't be an architect. That's my, in summary, if that's your thought, you shouldn't be an architect. This is something completely different. And it's also, I had a whole, yeah, I'll, I'll go backwards a step. For this, I had a, it's based on a, uh, a conversation I had, uh, a, a, a conversation I was involved in in the LabVIEW forums, on, on the main LabVIEW forum thing, not the speciality things like the vision and the champions forum, that sort of thing, and the main thingy. And when I was a lot younger, I was quite badly bullied, like verbally and physically bullied. And so now I have an absolute zero tolerance on any form of bullying, any form of whatever. And then there was, there was a discussion, and, and I wrote, I, when I first did this, I, kind of paraphrased the whole thing out to make it so it was difficult to see who it was I was having this conversation with. But then I decided not to do that because there will be somebody who goes backwards and figures out who it is and then says, oh, Darren said this about you, because that's how life works. And I thought, well, shall I take this to NI? And thought, well, I could do, but they'll do their normal, oh, we'll look into it, something will get done, and then nothing will get done, and then it will just go backwards and you just won't do anything. So hence, I'm now giving, I'm now saying it here. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to say this at the CLA summit, because I don't think that would get approved. Uh, and basically, the discussion was, I'm just going to, I'll just verbally explain the discussion. Somebody posted a question. English obviously wasn't this, this person's first language. It probably wasn't even his second language, this guy who posted this question. And what he did, was he spelt LabVIEW with just a capital L and the rest lowercase. <laughs> that's all he did. It, it, was, it was a very, very simple question he wanted to know. And he's, that's how he spelt LabVIEW. And there was, the, the very first reply was along the lines of, I'm walking because it eases my tension because it really pisses me off. <laughs> his, first reply, the, his first reply from this night of NI was, if you can't even spell LabVIEW right, then why should, we help, why should we answer your questions? And I read it and thought, well, yeah, well, yeah maybe, maybe he has a point, maybe not. In fact, in my thingy, to hide his name, because he's Knight of an I, in his name, his character name in my thingy was Sir Wanks-a-lot. Because <laughs> uh, it's like Sir Lancelot, you see. But. 
And uh, the, the next guy pipes up. I don't know if he was an item and I, he was definitely a champion, but the, the next guy pipes up. Yeah, I'm, something along the lines of, yeah, I'm sick and tired of uh, people asking stupid questions and us wasting our time answering stupid questions from people. And then some other guy, some other groupy guy pipes up saying, oh yes, Sir Wanks a lot, you're great, we agree with everything you say because you've got 15,000 posts. And it may just be me, but I thought that was a bit shit. And I was reading this and thinking, what is, like, what's wrong with these guys? This is like the community forum. This is like the first place people go for questions, to ask questions and to find answers. And I don't use it at all for, well, for this reason. And I know a lot of other people don't use it for very, very similar reasons. And I think it is a huge problem within, not just, not just this forum, all discussion forums. You always get the people who think they know everything in these forums and a bit of a, yeah, obnoxious whatever. And you, you know, within the, the lab view thing, you know which ones they are because they've got all their titles written out across the bottom, the CLED, the CLA, the CL, blah, 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 blah. Every word to describe these people begins with C. And <laughs> you've got, and it's, it's as if like, they have, because they've got this across the bottom and all the little badges and all the little things, it gives them some kind of license to be an asshole. And it's, that's just, no, it, it's, so I went, I read this and I went all in on this guy. I was like, uh, properly went like, like, who do you think you are like trying to like saying this to this guy? It's obviously, the English obviously is inferred to language, blah, 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 blah. And I think this guy was quite shocked, Sir Wanks a lot, that somebody had kind of like stood up to him because his first reply was, well, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know what you mean. So I'm like, well, what do you mean? You don't know what I mean. Like, just read your reply. Do you think that's a valid reply? And in his reply, he'd made a spelling mistake <laughs> in his first reply. <laughs> so I thought, I might use that against him. <laughs> so I said, I read the whole, th I read the whole thread. And nowhere could I find anywhere that you had spelt, uh, I can't even remember what word it was, that you had spelt that word wrong, like, ironically. Like, maybe he was trying to be funny, so whenever, whenever I criticize somebody's spelling, I always spell spelling wrong. I spell it spelling, just because it's, it's ironic and I find that amusing. <laughs> but I couldn't find anything, so I said, well, you can't spell this. This English is your, you might be American, but English is still your first language. <laughs> and you have a, you probably, your computer probably has a spell check, so that little red wiggly line underneath that word means that you spelt it wrong. You might be a knight of an eye, but you obviously can't use a spell check. And so, yeah, he got very defensive, blah, 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 and some other guy chipped in. You know, like when you, yeah, you go out on a Friday night out on Broad Street and you're having an argument with somebody, his mate comes, oh, you don't want to start with him, you don't know when to stop. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> his, his other, his, yeah, so another mate chipped in, another knight of an eye, hero guy chipped in. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't speak, you should, yeah. Nobody knows who you are, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what fucking difference does that make? And... This went on for quite some time, and in the end, the first guy, Sir Wanksalot, he said, yeah, sorry, it was out of order. Yeah, I, I was probably having a bad day. I apologize. You made, yeah, the point you made was fair enough. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for making it. So I thought, well, yeah, okay, fair enough. And he said, yeah, must have had a bad day, blah, blah, blah. And I don't think he realized who I was at that time. However, the following May, NI week, at the Lava Barbecue, he learned who I was. <laughs> because I knew who he was. And yeah, he had a bad day then. <laughs> so, a lot of people, yeah, you may say that, yeah, you're making a mountain out of mole, it's an isolated incident. But I don't think it is, because of these reasons. And the guy who posted the, 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 the question, I checked before I, before I uh, came here, he still has only that one post. If you look at his profile thing, it is just that one post. I don't know if it's because this guy, Sir Wanksalot, was an asshole, or maybe he just gave up and didn't care, or maybe he went somewhere else. Or another but I, I just think that's not how we should be as a community. 
and especially with the community edition coming out, I think there will be a lot more like newbie questions on the forums. And yeah, if anybody from NI is actually still listening, then maybe there should be a separate forum set up for them because I know I will end up kind of going on to the thingy forum and looking for jackasses like this, replying to people, asking what, or, 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 what yeah, they're simple questions, but so what? Nobody was born knowing LabVIEW. Nobody was born a CLA. So everybody had to learn, everybody started from somewhere. And to knock somebody down like this guy did just because they had the audacity to not capitalize a word properly is, yeah, is bullshit. This is also another, this was also a thing. Somebody reopened the thread. Second guy said, this is an old thread, why are you doing? Someone says, yeah, this conversation literally went on, like saying like, <laughs> it, it, it lit, that is literally the conversation. So it just got like this. They were just kind of like, you're doing it. No, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's like, it's, what the fuck's wrong with these people? <laughs> so this is another random tangent. Back in the 50s, like, lithium was used to, uh, to treat. That, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Have a spelling error there. I don't care. You can, you, you can write it on the forum and I'll, yeah, ignore it. And then this, this thing, then, then you add this. I don't know if you've ever noticed, it, it, caused these, it caused these kind of things, the side effects. This is the bottom end of the discussion forum. <laughs> Have you ever noticed it's powered by lithium? <laughs> I highlighted the, the side effects of the the, the diarrhea and that kind of thing, just to give the effect of, yeah, you're talking shit. And that's, that's, the end of, that's the end of the thing. That's basically my, the last bit is basically my rant, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's something I've wanted to say for a long time. I've, I shout, I don't know why I chose Steve to shout out about this not so long ago. And I really, want, I really wanted to say it last year but the, my presentation was uh, not voted in like to, to, to uh, this, uh, this event last year. So I did it a different way. I changed the title, changed the abstract thing, and then just wrote to this about this one anyway. Oh, so that explains why you didn't sound like you. Yeah. yeah. You really went for the anonymous. On, on the abstract, I put on something like... Uh, silence is golden. Yeah, and sometimes silence is golden. And uh, I've also put on, like, did I put how to be nice to people? Yeah. So that's, that's, re that's really not me. <laughs> so basically, the, the story of this is, like I said, is sometimes it's better to not say anything. And one of the guys, is it, uh, I can't remember who it is. So one of the guys has got like the unofficial rules of the forum on his, uh, on his signature, one of the Knights of NI people. And he might, uh, might touch, is it Darren Nottinger? I don't know, somebody's got the unofficial rules. I had a quick scan through. And guess what? On the rules, this might be a secret, I don't know, don't tell anybody. On the unofficial rules, it doesn't say you have to reply to every question. <laughs> so sometimes just read it and think, yeah, I'm not going to answer that and don't answer it. Because, yeah, you don't have to prove like you're an idiot. We all know. And that's it, I've got, third, I've got 33 seconds left. I assume there are no questions. It's not a presentation that invites questions, to be fair. <laughs> but you've got 30 seconds if you, anybody's got any questions. Oh, come on, run over, please. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're stood there? Because yeah. you're going to drag me off at stage. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. That's, that's literally it. No, end of show. I can't go any further. Look. I can't go any further. Where's the that's literally it. Where is the Range Rover? It's in a un parked underneath the Hilton. Not that I'm like middle class or anything at all. <laughs> it's in the private car park underneath the Hilton. Yeah, yeah that's it. Thank you.
There's a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For this project, especially considering its, its possible expansion <coughs> in the future, would you advocate always selecting a more powerful framework, design pattern, whatever, uh, that would give you more flexibility, more power uh, than it seems to be needed right now? Well, no, not necessarily, because what, what's, what's a more powerful framework? Is the guys asking if at the start of a project, if something, if you have like what looks to be like a standard size project and it grows in complexity, and I'm keeping an eye on York, grows in complexity and things, would you advocate choosing an architecture that is more powerful than what you seem to initially uh, require? Uh, yeah, from the first instance. But what's a more powerful architecture? Are you going to say to Steve Watts that you couldn't solve any problem with his state machine thing? Well, it depends what kind of state machine, so it's not that easy to present. <laughs> but, so yeah, but, yeah, but so question, what is a more powerful architecture? What makes an architecture more powerful? Okay, so Why can you solve a problem in Active Framework that you can't solve in state machine or DQMH or James's message, what, yeah, whatever what is message library thing's called? No, my analogy was that you can do, you don't have to use one thing. You, you don't have to, you can use whatever it is you want to use as an architect. You choose which one you want to use. You don't have to do it, because it looks like a complex problem, you don't have to do it in Active Framework because that's a complex solution. You do it in the simplest, the best solution is the simplest solution. And if, if it doesn't matter if it grows because that's you because then it should every architect you choose should be expandable and whatever all the apples are in the that might not have answered your question but fab when you're done when it's time to refactor when that architecture is no longer enough you change it that's what you did your requirements change you change the car so what was the right solution at one point might not be the right solution later yeah, and then you have to rewrite the entire application. Uh, you have maybe. to. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Refactoring is okay. There's nothing yeah, wrong with refactoring. Oh, uh, the cost. Yeah, yeah but, you would, but you wouldn't choose. Like when I bought my first car, fair enough, I might have had like my life plan of ending up with a wife and two kids. When I bought my first, I wouldn't, buy, I wouldn't have bought the Range Rover straight away, anticipating I would have the wife and the two kids. But yeah, your question was why you would use a more complicated one now, that anticipating that it would, I would, I would, I anticipated that I would have a family by the time I was whatever age, but I didn't buy the Range Rover straight away because that didn't suit what it was then. Fair enough, I had kids and I then redid it. I switched cars. I didn't buy the Range Rover straight away. seeing this uh, uh, doesn't cost you much to select this more powerful architecture right away. Even if you don't use all, all its uh, um, complexity and features, yeah, you, you can still implement this, that simpler project in the beginning, anticipating it to, uh, and even in the, if, even if it doesn't materialize later on, so what? You, you, uh, yeah, but you initially said a more powerful architecture. What, what makes one architecture more powerful than another architecture? May, may I add something to this? So you're saying there's no cost to picking a really complex architecture in the beginning for a simple project. No, I would say no. Power, powerful but, Okay, powerful. All right. So let's presume that more powerful is slightly more complex, okay? You've got all that extra code to maintain now that you wouldn't have otherwise. You've got to, if you onboard somebody, you've got to explain to them, like say you do some really simple project and you do it in something like the Active Framework that has a learning curve. Now you've got to explain to them how to use the Active Framework, right? So you, you're incurring that cost 
by putting the cost off, there is a chance that you may never actually need something more powerful or however you define that, um, right? So. Can, can I add to this? Who said that? <laughs> who said that? Huh? <laughs> uh, I've, I've been known to throw a few curveballs over, over the years. Uh, I've been dealing with computers and programs since the 60s. And basically what I've always seen is there's a background of religiosity that gets into these discussions. And at one point it becomes, no, 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 it has to be top down. No, 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 it has to be bottom up. No, 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 it has to be all scoped out in the beginning. No, 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 it has to be developed in stages. Oh, but they're more powerful, they're less powerful, they're less adaptive, more adaptive. That's the whole thing you're trying to get across here with yeah. the question of what does more powerful mean? Yeah. You're trying to nail a board in the wall. You probably don't need a sledgehammer. No. Even no. though it's more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys use DKMH. Why did you, why did you choose DKMH? <laughs> um, that probably could be a whole presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but did you choose it because it was powerful enough to do what you wanted to do, or did you choose it because it was expandable and simple to use, and it was like a kind of like a ready-made, like well, tailored architecture that? I, I would say when we chose it, it wasn't ready-made yet, and part of the process was in parallel with Delacor that the DQMH was expanded and developed further mm -hmm. and refined and. And we, and I'm sure some other customers, became sort of test beds for that ongoing work with an appropriate division of cost and division of labor. But I could see from the beginning that, yes, some kind of uh, cute message handler was one way to do it. Yep. And the question was, do you go that way or do you go with something like Actor Framework? And it's like, you know, yeah, it's pretty complex, but our application is pretty complex as well. So what do you do? Well, I'd rather develop the tool en passant and have it be able to be adapted instead of having a big curve you've got to learn at the beginning. So what would, if, what would it take for you as a company to say, yeah, DQMH isn't doing it for us anymore. We need a more powerful architecture, would you do that? Would you suddenly say, yeah, we don't want to use DQMH, we want to go, we want to go well, with something like else? Like I said, that kind of leads into a whole other presentation because... Yeah, what, what would it take? Would it be like you get to a point where, yeah, what, what would be the thing that said, yeah, DQMH just isn't working for us? Would it be because your application is not fast enough or it's I, not expandable enough? I would do it the other or? way around. Uh, one of the reasons we got to DQMH is because I was the one person programming for the first... 15 years of the so program. Just, uh, if you need to go to catch anything, feel free to. You don't need to be polite and wait. You can just go. Yeah. And, and it was very clear that, um, as uh, Fabiola used to describe the project, it was the China cabinet. And she didn't want to go in there. And, but that was done intentionally to obscure and obfuscate the code to protect the IP. Mm. So you've got all these other parameters. It's really great to talk about. We want to have it expandable, we want to have it scalable, we want to have it maintainable, we want to have it so the new guy can come in and just work on it. That's true if you've also got built-in protection for your IP. For me, it was the other way around because the project started back when anybody could hack into any built EXE hmm. in LabVIEW. I don't know how many people know that here. Yeah. So it was all well and good to do password protected code and do all this other stuff, but basically you're opening the biggest back door in the whole thing. So it's it's more than just, oh, this paradigm is the right one. That's that's the religiosity part. Mm. It's no no no, it's you know, this frame overall. Yeah, that's that was my that's somebody saying thing. about OOP, you have exactly. to do OOP. It is yeah, it's is nonsense. Right. Alan and then we're stopping. <laughs> I want to add one thing very quickly, Alan, before you go. I was going to say, that's not Alan's voice. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think that everybody's leaving out the business side of this equation because it's always about the software architecture. And we've been using DQMH for some time now, and we are fairly proficient with that. And I want everything to be a nail, as much as I can make it look like a nail, because I want to use this one tool. And that's for a business reason, not for a software architecture reason. And I invite anybody to explain why that is wrong. Thanks. Oh, I, 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 
not not going to address that directly because that wasn't what my comment was going to be. We might get it. I think they want to close down. We might get another beer. Uh, I don't disagree with you, um, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> the the comment that I wanted to make, and it actually goes to this gentleman that I think I need to get to know. Um, we're arguing over DQMH and AF and queued message handlers and other systems as if those were architecture. They are not. And there's a reason the CLD focuses on how well can you make a queued message handler, okay? The CLA exam used to be define a messaging system. That was the goal of the exam. The exam is no longer about that because that is not sufficient, okay? DQMH, AF, all these other systems, Lab is inherently multi-process and concurrent. These are all how we deal with the nuts and bolts of having our objects talk to each other. It is the definition of those objects. It is the responsibilities of those objects. And it is the nature of the messages themselves that they exchange. That is the architecture. So when we're arguing over DQMH and we're arguing over AF, and, and I am an AF partisan. I have my little AF jammies and I wear them to bed every night, okay? I brush my teeth with an AF toothbrush. Um, it's, it's, it is, it is very much a religious word. It is very much to taste because that in the end, of, that at the end of the day is, is not, it's not architecture. I firmly believe you should be able to pass the CLA exam by walking in with a stack of paper, draw, you know, a, a component diagram, a sequence diagram for how they talk to each other and a state diagram for the stateful objects. N name the LabVIEW components you're going to use to implement that set that piece of paper down on the desk and walk out and pass. When we're talking architecture, we've got to look at a higher level than this stuff and we have to get away from the religious wars. So you're saying that the, the title, like CLA, is the A bit is wrong? Or? I think, and this is based on having talked to new CLAs and experienced CLAs and people who should be CLAs but haven't bothered to take the exam because they don't need to. Um, CLA is when you get to start talking about this stuff. That's when it. That's when you know enough that it gets interesting, and that's that's my view on it. By that's when you know enough. You're not I, done knowing. You're never done learning. Yeah. That's well, no, yeah, that's that, that, that wasn't the thing I was going to say. But just just because it goes back to the assumed knowledge thing, just because you're a CLA, in your case, would you would you say that a CLA should know how to? do a project in Active Framework? How, how act, not, not, the, not the workings behind it, but how to do a project in Active Framework? N not AF per se. Um, I will, I, I, I'm coming around to the idea that, 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 that a CLA should know of classes and be reasonably comfortable with how to use them, even if their decision is not to. Um, because there's a lot of good reasons not to, mostly having to do with what we've talked about today, about being able to support you know, the team, when the team may not be there, or may just want to do something else. Um, it, it, that's, the, you know, a CLE needs to know to be able to, to look at a framework, which is just a tool to implement an architecture, and that's what it is. It's a tool to implement architecture and go, that's the tool I want to use for this, and, and maybe because I'm comfortable with this one. A lot of projects get done in DQMH or AF because the people know how to use it, and they, they know that hammer really, really well, and they can use it with craftsman-like precision, whereas using a different hammer, you know, they're just not, it's not there for them. Um, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that you should have to know how to do AF. I'd, I'd love it if you did, but, but that's just because I would like all of us to see, all of us to have more tools in the toolbox, okay? Uh, 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 that, that I, I, I stopped being a partisan a long time ago because it's pointless. It doesn't, we wind up having these arguments over, oh, you know, do I want to use a metric wrench or an English one? And it's going to be situational. <laughs> you know. Yep. A few years ago, I, there was, there was something on the community and I can't remember exactly who it was or when it was, but someone went from not having seen LabVIEW before, month one they wrote the CLAD, month two they wrote their CLD, and month three they wrote their CLA, and that was learning it by parrot fashion. 
you can pass your CLA by parrot fashion. You don't need to know very much in order to pass. I only started learning architectures once I'd gotten my CLA, because then you start asking the questions. Well, and you should, you should be able to say to somebody who hasn't prepared, who hasn't studied, who hasn't done anything, write this exam, and they should be able to pass, because they should know enough understanding rather than parrot fashion. With all tests, there's a certain amount of you have to get into the heads of the testers. Uh, with, with all, with all tests, you have to be able to get into the head of the examiners uh, because the test, the test artifacts are what they are. But you're absolutely right. It, 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 and, and you know, like Fab said, it, it gets you an interview. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you get a job. Um, I, 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 when I was at NI, I got to give. I, I was, we all were always interviewing people, and so I gave a few technical interviews, and I wrote the technical interview question for LabVIEW, which was really, again, more about how they worked than about LabVIEW itself. And the very first time I gave this this question, I started, sat down and I said, all right, I've got a question for you in 27 parts. Just the one question, 27 parts. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and there are no wrong answers. And then the son of a bitch proved me wrong <laughs> by giving me like the worst possible answer in the world. And he was a CLA. And that was a light bulb moment for me because yeah, it, it, you can get, you can pass the, the you can pass a test, great. Um, for most of us, most of the time that indicates uh, uh, that you have enough mastery that you can start. And, and again, I'm not a big, I'm not a rigid believer. You can't start asking these questions until you're a CLA. That's, that's bullshit. Um, no, you, you can ask, if you can ask the question, you can ask the question. I don't care what your credential is. But you, the typical progression is by the time you get to CLA mastery, you are starting, you have started to ask those kinds of interesting questions that, that, that lead to the kind of growth for all of us. So. It happens, what can I say, right? Um, just a personal comment to kind of dovetail with you and also the general sort of flow here, I think. Uh, the primary reason why I would do CLA is so I could go to the summit and so I could just hang out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I did my, that, that is the entire reason I did my CLA to go to the CLA summit. The primary reason I haven't, and I almost undoubtedly won't, is I'd rather be on the golf course than <laughs> jump through a bunch of hoops just in order to have discussions that I've already been having for 20 years. But that's me. Well, I, I've been trying to convince them to have the CLA summit in Portugal, in South Portugal, so I can do both. I can go to CLA summit, <laughs> then I can go play some golf. But right. nobody listens. No, maybe if you get in as well, maybe if I got CLA in, then you can get, get in get as well. Two people telling right, them they need right. to. Uh, that they need to do it. Right, I really think that we are done. <laughs> Literally and metaphorically. <laughs>